the rule of 100 says essentially it's it's a type of asset allocation if you will but it's using numbers and so you take the number 100 or this is what used to be the case take it the number 100 subtract your age and so if you're 60 years of age then you should have 60% of your holdings and equities, so, so to speak, and 40% in alternatives or fixed income of some sort. And that was the generally accepted practice for a long time. Uh, but in the world that we live in today, people are living longer. And uh, be- because of that, it's no longer the rule of 100. Now it's the rule of 110, the rule of 120. Some people are even saying longer than that. As people are nearing retirement and they're starting to maybe realize that this pot of money is going to be the nest egg they have to live off of this money becomes more real to them how does how does what do people need in an income plan and how does this get implemented that way well this is a part where it becomes a team effort from the advisor and they need to uh, certainly have a cpa that is monitoring the plan if not even coming into the room and meeting with it as the plan is designed and there are several different ways to attack it and some of it is personal preference for the person but our advice might be as much as you know let's stagger or let's uh, mix simultaneously the different tax statuses that you're taking from so that your overall tax burden isn't weighing you down so uh, what i mean by that is you might take some of the money from your traditional ira which is going to be fully taxable you might take some money from the roth which is tax-free and uh, or a tax-deferred bucket even. Speak to what our fee range is there, you know, the minimum and the maximum, and oftentimes how that depends on the portfolio size and what, what portfolio we build for them. Yeah, and it also becomes uh, it comes into uh, what kind of income strategy do we set up for them in retirement. But on the low end, typically 05 to 0.6%, and on the high end, no higher than around 1.5%. Uh, if we've got all of someone's money in one of these more actively managed strategies. And we talk a lot about tactical money management as opposed to passive money management. That's essentially the difference between a more active uh, trading strategy, especially in the event of a market downturn, relative to the more passive al- asset allocation strategies. Um, and these, you know, these fees oftentimes come out on, you divide the total annual fee up by 12 months and get charged on a monthly basis. So our clients actually get to see those fees in a dollar amount, not not just a percentage, but the specific dollar amount that's charged every month. And this gal's statement was, I don't want a will because I don't want my estate to go through probate. But there's a that's a very confused statement there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a will does require going through probate but if you do not have a will, you still your assets will still have to go through probate to pass to your heirs. Or they could, because you could have named beneficiaries in certain right. accounts. Right, cer- yeah, like in, in, in retirement accounts, I mean, in life insurance, those would pass directly to the beneficiaries. But there's a lot of things like a home, if it wasn't properly titled during a lifetime, that has to go through probate. So, so a big point I want to get across to our audience here is the fact that just because you have a will doesn't mean your estate will go through probate. What's probably the most popular tax sheltered account? And I say that with a smile because I I already know the answer. Yeah, I mean 401ks. Everybody knows what a 401k is. Most people have 401ks. If you don't have one, you probably want one and you know know all about it. You you your employer takes money out of your paycheck, puts it into this account and gets invested. And it grows and and the tax shelter happens because as it's growing, as you're putting the money into this account, it has been sheltered from taxes. When uh, the market goes up and your 401k account you know, skyrockets, you are sheltered from paying any capital gains on those taxes. If you add up what, what you spend for a Medicare supplement, plan F or plan G, people buy generally buy a plan G these days. Some, some agents will steer people to a plan N. Um, But if you add up the cost of a Medicare supplement, a standalone prescription drug plan, and then I turn around and ask, do you go to the gym anywhere? Because Medicare Advantage plans will pay for your gym membership. Do you uh, see a dentist? Do you pay for any dental care? Do you have dental insurance? Because a Medicare Advantage plan, a lot of them include at least basic dental care. Um, Do you you get some new contacts each year or get your eyes checked up each year? If you start adding the other benefits all the other up, benefits on top of the cost of a Medicare supplement, 
it's real easy to get up to a lot of people are spending three thousand a year on just general health care and exercise and taking care of themselves and they don't even realize it <laughs>